Hi everybody, it's Jackie Schomburg Minen. I am working on a 12 by 12 inch wood panel. It's a cradled wood panel, which means that there's like a frame in the back, which keeps it up about an inch and a quarter. And I'm applying some clear gesso. For some reason, I don't like white gesso. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no explanation for it. But because this was completely unprimed, I did go ahead and put some gesso on it. I just used the clear. I'm using the fluorescent red paint from Nova Color Paints, which I love. And I will tell you, I have very bright lights in my room because I record these videos. So the bright lights combined with this fluorescent red was a lot <laughs> to look at during this whole thing. Um, it was very exciting. I walked out of my, my art room and I was like, oh my goodness. Let my eyes readjust. I'm adding Titan Green Pale, which I use as Celadon. It's a really nice neutral greenish color. And I really like the juxtaposition between how bright the red is and how unremarkable the, the Celadon is. I shouldn't say that. That sounds judgy. <laughs> You're great too, little green. It's just that it's a very, it's the opposite of fluorescent. How's that? Because I like the shape that I made with the red, I decided I would just outline the whole shape in the celadon and start out with this kind of super saturated and then desaturated complement. I didn't want to have one flat side, so I took some creative liberties and made it a more interesting shape on that end. I went into this project, like so many of my projects, with zero expectations. I thought I would go ahead and do just a pure painting today. And I'm only working on one panel, which is also very unlike me. By the time I start working on like 10 panels, it gets a little unruly in here and it's hard for me to keep track of where everything is. Plus, if you were to zoom out on this, my desk is pretty messy outside of the viewing range. So I didn't have room for 10 panels or even four necessarily. So I would I thought I'd keep things simple with just the one. Again, I had no plan, so I'm making it up as I'm going along. I'm adding some quinacridone red, which is a really nice transparent color. I decided to put a bunch of water with it. That was my head, sorry. Blowing out some air bubbles. I don't know what I was going for, but it really didn't do a whole lot because there was so much water that it didn't dry pretty much at all. So it didn't really leave any interesting marks. I added some more fluorescent red, thinking I can get the colors to work together a bit more. I honestly, you can't, you can't even see because the red's so bright in the movie that uh, you can't really see what it's doing anyway. But it basically did a whole lot of nothing, so I decided I'd dry it up. All right, now I'm going for some yellow ochre, which I really liked how the yellow ochre looked on top of the fluorescent red. Again, it was kind of a very much toning it down in that area anyway. And it looks so brown next to the fluorescent red. It just looks so brown. I know that fluorescent red does not show up well in video, but I'm fairly impressed with how it's showing up here. It's reasonably close to what it looks like in my art room. This is transparent red iron oxide. 
It's very transparent, as it's even in the name. And it just added a darker tone on top of the fluorescent red. Spraying water on it, I was able to get some of the yellow ochre up so that the fluorescent red shined through. And I was not crazy about uh, where I overlapped the yellow, the transparent red iron oxide over the yellow ochre. I'm using some carbon black now, high flow golden carbon black. I wanted some defined space in here. I should say high contrast defined space. I'm basically using the black here to cover up that overlap between the transparent red iron oxide and the yellow ochre. I used more brushes today than I've used probably in the past two months combined. And I didn't expect that. I expected to do a lot more with my color shapers today. I think I stopped, I didn't think about this consciously, but I, I think I stopped using the color shapers once I got that uh, shape that I liked with the, the um, fluorescent red. It was just easier to use brushes to get the shapes that I was looking for. I wanted to keep the transparent red or the fluorescent red, excuse me, in the painting. And I wasn't sure where I was going to go with it. So I left this outline around the shape. And I do just out of the frame <laughs> to the left. I do have collage papers handy just in case I need them. This is just titanium white. And I'm using my roll of paper towels just to thin it out and I'm not sure what words I would use, I guess just to make it, well, just to make it thinner. It looks more ethereal and fog-like. A veil, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> it creates a veil over the other colors. Sprayed a little bit of water. I wanted some of the red to poke through. And because I'm only using one panel at a time, or one panel total during this exercise, I did use my hair dryer up quite a bit. Acrylic dries so fast that when I'm doing a series of even four other paintings at the same time, when I switch panels and get back to the first one again, the you know, the last panel is already dry, so. But working on one thing at a time, I need to, to speed things up a bit. So I added a glaze on top of that, and I was instantly unhappy <laughs> that, I, that I blocked out so much of the white. And I don't remember what I used the glaze of. It was either yellow ochre or um, quinacridone gold. So adding more white here. I 
I'm using a palette knife, which you'd think makes it go on thicker, but I'm thinning it out so much as I'm pushing the color around that it does dry pretty quickly. Just a, lots of thin layers to make it look opaque. I mixed up some white and some phthalo turquoise. Try to get something a bit brighter. And then I realized, oh, that's kind of right in the middle of the whole painting. <laughs> Why did I do that right there? And then I thought, maybe I can just get away with putting more of them on and making more of these strange rings. And then I thought, now it looks like a cartoon bird, <laughs> like a like an owl wearing glasses. So I took as much of that off as would come off easily. And you can see that not a lot of it came off, but I realized I could scratch into the yellow ochre still. So I used my fingernail just to carve some X's. And then I abandoned baby blue. This is straight phthalo turquoise. And I really liked that addition. Not knowing what else to do, but knowing I needed some lighter lights and darker darks, I decided I would outline the background in white. Which is really different for me. For some reason in my mind, I get stuck that having white on the panel means it's unfinished. And I got stuck with that a long time ago. And I still have to consciously remind myself that it's fine to use white. I'm just using a wooden skewer type thing to, to carve into that freshly painted white. So anyway, this is me getting over my, not a fear of white, but just getting over the rules. I try to remove as many rules as possible and just live life. <laughs> Sometimes it's not a great idea, but I find it's just easier to go from, again, what feels good, what I think looks good in, in the moment and not worry so much about what should or shouldn't be done. Typically I use my Stay Wet palette, which has wet paper towels underneath a layer of baking parchment, which as you might understand from the name, uh, keeps my paints wet a lot longer. This is just a disposable palette paper pad and I had forgotten how quickly the paints dry on these. Very fast. All right, this is me going a bit crazy and deciding that I needed some Celadon everywhere. Now that I got rid of it on the sides and the background, I wanted to put it in here and really make the fluorescent red more special by getting rid of more of it. And I did that, and then I thought, oh, I don't know. I wanted to find a way to let some of the fluorescent red shine through. And when I just rubbed this with a baby wipe and scratched a bit with my nail, I got quite a bit to show through, which I really liked the texture that that brought out.
Now I'm mixing the celadon with some of the phthalo turquoise. I wanted more of this green cool color. And again, to cover up more of the red. I think this is when I realized I wasn't using my brushes, or I was using my brushes so much, so I decided I'd use my thin color shaper just to make different marks. It's strange how much using a different brush can change the, the feel of whatever you're painting. So if you use five different brushes to paint five different sections on a painting, it'll be more interesting than if you just use the same brush and paint the same thing. <laughs> um, and it's just, you know, it's a texture issue with the different brush strokes. It's how the brushes move the paint. It's, it's different enough to make some contrast between those five different brushes that it makes the whole painting more interesting. See, I can say that, that's that's the rule. And then I, I'm the person who just uses my color shaper. <laughs> so I'm not saying that I do the rules. I'm just saying or that I don't follow the rules. But it is true that you will get five different textures if you use five different brushes. I just don't always choose to do that. And you don't have to either. That's the beauty of being the artist, right? You get creative control over whatever you're designing. I decided to use a glaze of, I don't know if that was a mix of the color or just the phthalo turquoise, but I wanted to bring some of it down into the celadon section. To have more of an ombre effect, if you will. I told you I had collage material standing by. Some tissue paper I found, which happens to just completely match the phthalo turquoise. So I was looking for collage material. I, I, I wanted something to add that was going to make it an impact in a way that I wanted it to make. I didn't want to make it more busy. I wanted to make it more special. And I didn't find anything, you know, in that moment that made things feel more special. The tissue paper was really close, but it just felt like it was going in the same size of all the other shapes that were on the, the panel. Kind of have that like softball size shape syndrome right now. I liked using my funky brush 
So this is just a paintbrush taped to a stick. And it, the brush is bent funny because I've horribly mistreated it and left it <laughs> inside things. And because it's heavier with the brush attached, the brush smashes down on the bottom of my water cup. So if you'd like to have a funky brush of your own, just totally mistreat a brush and you will have your own <laughs> totally uncontrollable brush. I was very happy with the addition of the black and white. I felt like that gave a clear focal point, especially with that red up at the top being so vibrant. There's still a lot of vibrancy all over, but the black and white helps solidify where to look first. Because people will always look at the highest contrast first. And black and white is as high contrast as you can get. Usually when I add collage, it feels really good. And none of those felt really good. So even though I thought about it, it just didn't work out. So these are, um, these, these are gelatos that I'm using here. And it's just to get another layer on. I didn't like that uh, yellow ochre on top of the celadon. This is uh, gloss medium. The gelatos are water soluble, so they will continue to smear unless you fix them. So I just sealed them in with the gloss medium. Put on way too much, so I had to clean it up. I'm just thinning this. I don't even know what color this would be. It's like a it's like a really light taupe. I was adding a bit of white in that black and white striped area just to the layer of paint I had wasn't super duper opaque. That's a technical term super duper. So uh, I added some pencil just to make sure it was a little bit more opaque. Now I added a tiny bit of yellow ochre to this white to make it more of a cream so that the white wasn't so, you know, drywall white color. It wasn't that, but I'm just warming it up a tiny bit and giving the white another layer to make it more opaque. I had so much fun making this. I highly recommend that you create with without any expectations of what you're going to make. I think it's the most fun way to do it because you always end up surprised. You always end up with something new that did not exist until you made it. Whether you like it or not, and whether you think it's gorgeous and want to put it on your wall or not, it still didn't exist until you made it. And I think that's always cause for celebration. So enjoy yourselves. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. And if you don't know what else to do, or you're having a bad day or you're having a great day, I highly recommend going to paint. And if you don't like it, you just wipe it off like I do. <laughs> and this is the finished product right now. I may add more. I may not. Doesn't it look nice? Everything looks better in a frame.